Hey everybody, John here, and welcome back to the series, How to Use Toxic Biohazard. This is going to be video six, and we're going to be talking about the matrix section. And for this video, we're going to be focused more on this first page here regarding the FM synthesis, the mix and pan, which we briefly talked about before, the LFO, and then the master pitch modulation section. So let's load up a fresh patch. Let's go to reset, and let's go to this basic sine wave here, which is fine. So as we see, let's focus on this first section here. This is FM, which is for frequency modulation. So the way to think of it, if it's kind of confusing, it's kind of a weird way to think about it, but think of FM synthesis as more so to affect the timbre of a sound that you're working on. And what it's actually doing is it's taking another oscillator or operator and it's using that oscillator to affect the frequency, to modulate, to change the frequency of the one that you're targeting. So for example, let's pick a triangle wave here and let's turn this on. So if we turn this on, we don't hear anything because oscillator two is not routed into our mix as we can see it's zero right here, but that doesn't matter because we're just using this oscillator to influence number one, what we do here, right here. So our goal is to have oscillator two, so this triangle wave, to modulate the frequency of this sine wave here. And the way to do that is look on this grid here. So we're like, okay, oscillator two, let's go in this row, say oscillator two, I want this oscillator to affect number one. So we'll go down to one right here as we see there. And as we move this up and play something, we can see how it's changing. And you can see the waveform too as well. So down it's a pure sine wave, and as we move this up, this triangle wave is having an influence. And all the way at the top. And that's what I mean about changing the timbre, because this is just a sine wave, but it's a little bit different now. And you'll notice different notes have different kind of influences to it. It won't all sound completely the same. And then what's also cool as well is we can change the pitch of this triangle wave that's changing this first one and see how that changes. Which is probably similar to how uh, the matrix made that sound, I would imagine. Obviously with more effects, but you get the point. So in a nutshell, that's how it works. Let's bring this back down to zero. And you'll notice if you want to do number three to one as well, you can do that too. So we'll find three and we'll go all the way up and then turn it on. So now this sine wave is affecting this one. You can get really crazy too. You can say, I want three to modulate two and then two to then modulate three. So if we wanted to do something like that, we're like, okay, so let's think about this. We want three uh, operator. I keep thinking, I want to say uh, oscillator, whatever. It's confusing. If I want to get three to, to modulate number two, I'd go three. I'm like, okay, one, two. I'd have three influence two completely. And then now since two is affected by three, I want two then to affect one. So then I would go here and affect that completely that way. You get weird stuff. So it's de definitely something cool to play around with. And we'll bring this back down to zero. So frequency modulation is really, really cool. There's a lot of interesting sounds and stuff you can kind of come up with. But I would say as a general tip, less is more. You don't want to always go to 100 because that's a lot. Maybe you just want to change the sound just a little bit. Maybe have a little bit of influence as well. So next up here on this section, we have the mix and pan, which we talked about briefly. Um, but just another recap. So oscillator one's volume, the reason we hear that, let's turn this back up, the reason we hear this is because it's routed 100% to the mix bus. Now if we turn this off, we don't hear anything, and let's turn number two on. We don't, I don't know why that went off, that's weird. Uh, but we don't hear anything if I press keys. That's why we gotta turn up this volume here and send it to the mix bus. And the same thing is for all the other ones. So this is gonna be three's volume, four's volume, five, six, and so forth. And then right below that is going to be the pan. So let's take oscillator one completely out of the equation. Even though it's on here, we still won't hear it because it's not routed. So let's turn number two on, and we can see it's routed 100%. And let's bring that to the left channel by going minus 50. 
and then to the right is going to be obviously to the right and we'll bring that back down here to zero and down here is going to be the lfo section so let's reset program and let's maybe make like a square wave for example so we have the square wave here and we want to control the volume so this volume here with the lfo and that's what this section down here is for so as i mentioned before um personally i like to leave lfo one more so for cutoff and filter stuff Unless you want to use the same LFO for something else, that's fine. But generally, I kind of like using LFO 2 a little bit more for volume stuff like this in this section. So for that example, let's say we want to have this sine wave affect the volume of this square wave. The way we do that is we're going to look at LFO 2. It's going to be LFO 2 section, and we want to change oscillator 1, which is this column right here. So as we increase this, you can see how that affects the volume as this sine shape right here. And you can pick different waveforms and cycle through it. And then this value here is gonna be the influence of how much that LFO is affecting that volume. So there's just a little pulsing there at 46. Then it's just crazy at 100. And then you do have the point to go all the way down to negative values. You're like, whoa, that's weird. Why would I go negative? And the difference is, is that's basically going to invert that LFO. So if we went back to sine wave one, if it's at 100% like this, then it's first going to start going up and then down, right? But if it's going all the way down into the negatives, it's going to basically flip this sine wave. So it's going to go down first and then up first. So that's the difference of positive and negative values here. And then zero is obviously in the, uh, in the middle there. So next up at the very bottom here, it's a little kind of overlooked, I think, but this is the, the master pitch modulation. So this is where you're going to control like the main global pitch of stuff. You can control it with LFO2 if you want. And we can see at 100% LFO2, this, this uh, shape here is controlling the pitch of the whole patch. And then the bend here too is going to be on the keyboard of how many semitones you go here. And this is going to, the EFG is going to be like, a, what, 24 I think it was? Yeah, 24 and minus 24 of the envelope filter. So if you want to like quickly move the, the, the pitch or something like that, this is generally the section you kind of want to go in and maybe change the speed of things. So something kind of cool to play with. So hopefully this section kind of makes a little bit more sense now. Um, the next video we're going to talk about the MIDI and probably as well as the sequencer as well. Because this one I wanted to dedicate one video to it because this is probably the most page you're going to, or the most time you're going to spend on this page here. So as before, if there's anything that's confusing to you, please let me know and I will uh, hopefully try to demystify it as, uh, as best as I can. So thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.